like anything stock. <laughs> I really, I like, I like all my stuff custom. I like, I mean, even down to my shoes. I like to be a little different than everybody else. My name is Lindsay Atwood. I'm from Deltona, Florida, and I'm in Acrophobia. I have two brothers. I have boy cousins. I was the only girl. You know, Christmas time, everybody got Nerf guns. Not me. I got a Barbie doll, so I had to learn to defend myself real quick. I had an extensive dog collection growing up, but I had Barbie's Ferrari. I had Barbie's Mustang. I didn't want Barbie's dream house. I wanted Barbie's cars. So I would take my brother's G.I. Joe's and off they would go in Barbie's Mustang. <laughs> and my brothers weren't as big into cars like they are now, but I think that's because of me. I, I credit that to myself. <laughs> but growing up, it was me that was into the cars and not them. As a kid, my parents would take us to Dairy Queen on Saturday nights and there was a old car club that would you know like everything was 50s or 60s era and they would all meet up at the Dairy Queen so my parents would take us out there and get us some ice cream and we would walk the cars and I knew I wanted something but I didn't necessarily want something like that and I'd never seen a mini truck before until maybe I was uh, in my high school history class and I had just bought my first truck and a friend of mine said don't, don't modify your truck yet, don't modify your truck. And I was like, what are you talking about, don't modify my truck? He's like, let me, let me show you something. And he brought me a photo off of his brother's wall of the baby blue ranger from Pebble Pushers from, I'm talking like a long time ago. And, and that was it for me. It was a 96 Ranger Splash, that was my first vehicle. I still have it. I had to buy the drop beams for a Ranger, so as soon as I could save up $300 on a 16-year-old salary, I, uh, I bought those DJM drop arms and that was, that was my first mod. I can't let go of it. It's, uh, we actually brought it out to Slam Fest this year, last year, and it's baby pink now. It was burgundy, now it's baby pink. It's body drop. My first big car show with my Ranger, we went to Slam Fest in Tampa. I mean, 20 years ago. So I think I've been to Slamfest every year since then. Most memorable would probably be Unite 09. I gotta say, we were just talking about that one the other day. So that's the one that's, that's popping up in my head. Uh, Jason and I were both there. Oh, uh, let me think of what, a, that one was, we went, we went off the cliff in a golf cart. So I don't know how to say that without sounding like a bunch of drunk idiots. <laughs> but what, what's what's really bad is we weren't drinking so that's the worst part about the whole thing is we weren't drunk it probably would have been a better outcome if we were i had a stopping point for a little while i got real sick and medical bills versus mini trucking one had to had to kind of stop for a little while so once i paid the my medical bills off i saw this for sale and I had to have it. It's a 08 Chevy Silverado. Um, I call her Buxom. And it was built in Texas originally. And I actually spoke to the original owner. Um, he asked me if I ever sold it to let him know. But he sold it. I guess he was having suspension problems with it. Sold it to a guy named Brad in Virginia. And Brad had the suspension completely redone. Um, and hit the guy who redid it did an amazing job. Absolutely amazing job. So. I don't want to touch any of that because, you know, you don't fix what's not broken. Right. <laughs> um, the guy who I bought it from had just had the suspension redone, so but it needed a new axle, and had no. I mean, he had interior in it, but we I've redone all the interior and uh, I the wheels were on it. I love these wheels, so I I'm keeping them. <laughs> I've been in Acrophobia, full logoed in Acrophobia a year now, a year and a half now.
so, but I prospected for a year before that. When I was 16 in high school, we started our own club at school. So I was in that club and uh, in some smaller clubs around the area growing up. And then I got out of clubs altogether and I said I wasn't going to do another club. And I met the guys in Acrophobia, guys and girls in Acrophobia. And uh, they're good people. So they'll help you out on the side of the road. They'll you know, open their doors for you. And they're just, they're good people. So I changed my mind and decided to join a club again. I don't like anything stock. <laughs> I really, I liked, I like all my stuff custom. I like, I mean, even down to my shoes. I like to be a little different than everybody else. That's just, that's just me. I mean, why else would we build these trucks? I do feel it's an addiction. Cause you couldn't, even when I was sick and I wasn't building my truck at the time, it was a constant in the back of my head. Like, what am I gonna do next? What am I gonna do next? When am I gonna pull the Ranger out of the garage? You know, what am I gonna do? And as soon as those bills were paid, it was next. Okay, keep going, keep going. And I mean, even now we are constantly going back and forth on, all right, you know, what are we gonna do? We got this list, this, this, and this. Which vehicle are we working on today? And, and we just go out there and we do it. This one is close. And I do wanna finish this one. The Ranger has, has some work still. So I hope to finish that one. So I've, I've got, you know, about three more projects in the back of my head that I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to build. So I got to finish these. I won't buy another one until I, I'm finished. At least with one. At least with this one. And then I'll get another one. Yeah, it's a big. Building trucks is a big stress relief. You get to get creative, even if you're not creative. You, you know, you, you can express yourself in your vehicle. I, I am one half of. Felt and Fabrication, and we do custom paint. You can find us on social media, Facebook and Instagram. We met 2008, and we dated for a little while. Said, nah, this isn't gonna work. Split up, lost contact, and then found each other again, and said, you know what, why did we, why did we ever but what was going on with that? And we were like, eh, we're just kids. We didn't know what we were doing and we gave it another shot and here we are. <laughs> but we have some super big projects coming out by the end of this year that we're really happy to be on board with and we're happy to be a part of their build. And it'll be nice to see them completed and where they, you know, it, we get to almost watch their dream come true, even though we're helping with it. It's still, it's a nice feeling when they come to pick up their vehicle and they're excited to see it. They're happy to see it and it's what they wanted. I haven't known Acro my entire mini trucking career, I guess. Um, but Jason's been there for me. He's been there for me a lot. And there's been people along the way that aren't even in the scene anymore that that helped me or, you know, if I, you know, blew a bag and I needed one, they would rush out at two o'clock in the morning and bring me one or, I know Riza Shulman, she's been, since I came into Acro has been, I know she's, they're Dave's trucks, they're not hers, even though technically they're hers, you know, it's a legality, but <laughs> she, she has done more for me this past year than people I've known my entire life. She has had my back through some ups and downs and um, she, it's just, people like her, I would have never met not being in this. I would have never, I wouldn't have met her if I wasn't in this scene and she's this really sweet woman. That's how it makes you feel though, you know, and you, you meet these people and even if you don't know them forever or you know they're just someone's wife or girlfriend at the time they they make an impression on you and they find a little spot in your heart and you just you can't let them go yeah i don't think i would be on the same path now that i i would be on a different path is what i i should say i i wouldn't be where i am today if i wasn't building trucks
I'd probably have a lot more money, that's for sure. <laughs> A lot more money. So if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. Perfect. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Hey. He showed me a, a truck the other day for sale and I was like, don't. I was like, walk away. Just walk away. I was like, I'm going to want it. Just go. It depends on who I want to tell what. The audience, right? Because <laughs> if it's my mom, I probably don't want to bring up, you know, Unite or something. <laughs> we had a prayer circle going. Yeah, we were singing Kumbaya. It was amazing.